Thank you. Thank you, Zoe, for having me. You're very welcome. So um, I know that you had been in the bug bounty space as an entrepreneur for a while. And I guess, you know, first of all, actually, if you want to explain your entry into bug bounty in general, because yeah. I've heard this story before when we've spoken yeah. in the past and it's very inspiring. Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, like for all the first time listeners, um, I have been into like, you know, traditional uh, cybersecurity space when I started with my uh, company, Kaylee Technologies, and we were into the services domain where we used to do VAPD services for the clients. And, you know, that uh, during those times, sometimes we feel like, you know, uh, budget becomes a lot of uh, uh, issue while, you know, doing such activities. And we often used to get certain kind of pushback okay we can do it at a later step you know and uh, and that's that's actually with everybody around who are into this space because as you know security becomes uh, you know a last stage where you know people want to put their money in so this is this was a general trend that we were looking at and you know uh, in order to cater that uh, issue we wanted to make security uh, really affordable, available, and accessible to everybody. So that was something that we wa we were wanting to aim at. And uh, there are a lot of bug bounty platform already available in the market. And uh, let's say there's no competition, like, you know, you can match up to bigger uh, players in this space. But in order to cater to the small size businesses, uh, or maybe, you know, the sole proprietorships, who those who are just starting up, or small companies with, you know, minimum of four to five people, you know, who want to have security because that is very important. So we wanted to cater that segment. And that's how, you know, we come up with our bug bounty platform. And, you know, as it is like a startup boom everywhere and, you know, companies coming up in Web2 space, company coming up in Web3 space, we want it to be a very holistic platform because, you know, innovation is the key. If you, if you need to, if you need to cater, you need to have variety. You need to cater to the public who, who you know, want to have uh, their uh, subjects into that place, you know, and that's where uh, we started with our own bug bounty platform. So where, you know, we do not charge any platform fee and companies are free to come in, launch their program, and, you know, they are the master of their own game. So they can customize it. They can have it uh, as per they want. Even they can give out swags if they don't want to give out money. So it, it has to be, you know, uh, sometimes accessible to the people who really want it. And, you know, creating also a pool of uh, researchers around, which will give uh, a kind of a holistic community feel as well. So, uh, and, uh, you know, when we are starting up in the cybersecurity space and uh, young blood is coming in and, the, you know, the beginners, they really need that kind of a recognition and it is helpful for them as well. They get access to, you know, a community in which they can also um, uh, gain knowledge, increase their knowledge as well and have that relationship. So it's a win-win situation for both organizations as well and for the researchers as well. And, you know, with the so much of... Uh, demand of the Web3 projects that is growing into the uh, security space. Uh, companies and projects that are op operating in Web3, they need to have, uh, they need to make sure that uh, it they have integrity into the platform and also the confidentiality. So these two things are maintained equally and entering into the space was, you know, uh, it, I, I would say a strategic move at that time because uh, everybody is uh, talking about Web3 and they're scalable as well. Uh, not to speak about now, now um, normal companies also going into Web3 spaces, create financial companies, creating D apps. So this space has a lot of potential and it will keep growing because of the nature that you know they are decentralized. So I would say my motivation was to cater to smaller businesses bring out innovation and also 
uh, you know, explain to people that it is not always necessary to put, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars into security. You can always start with, you know, less and less is more sometimes. Once you get like, you know, I can, I can afford it and it is accessible to me. And then, you know, the path is endless. Well said, well said. And when you talk about community, that actually really resonates with a lot of, you know, the entrepreneurs in the Web3 space as well. They're very yeah. community oriented. They're very into, you know, financial inclusion in general, um, openness and open source. And right. that's part of what I love about the parallel between the InfoSec community, the information security community and the Web3 mm -hmm. systems as well. Um, do you see that parallel as well? Uh, he, like, yes. So there are a lot of similarities, if you say, between the Web 2 and the Web 3 space as well, because uh, collaboration is one point, you know, just like, you know, we do a collaboration in Web 2 space, you know, between the researchers and the companies. It is essential in Web 3 space as well, because companies rely on the expertise of the researchers. And, you know, they need to identify and resolve those issues as well. So I think that is one common point that is uh, their collaboration. And uh, I would say like even the disclosure programs or maybe the kind of reporting. So researchers are still at, uh, you know expected to follow some uh, responsible uh, vulnerability disclosure practices, uh, which will involve like, you know, reporting of vulnerabilities uh, to the affected parties before making them public. Because sometimes companies do not want to make them public as well. They want to keep it internal. So I think uh, these are a few similarities uh, that I see. And uh, in terms of Web2 and Web3, I would say only differences between the technology uh, part where Web3 is like uh, decentralized, which can lead to differences in you know how the vulnerabilities are addressed. And uh, there may not be a centralized entity to coordinate and manage the disclosure. So that, that's something that I think differs in that uh, part. And uh, also maybe the attack vector, if I must say, like attack vectors are also a key difference where, you know, Web3 can be very complex sometimes because if you have to audit a smart contract, it requires a different kind of expertise. And you know they are not very well prevalent in Web two space as well. So the researchers who are in the Web three space, they need to adapt to these challenges. And you know, uh, I also often see a shift. Like you know, um, researchers in the Web two space, they want to scale up. They want to come up into the Web three space, learn about what is decentralization, learn about blockchain, learn about blockchain security, and uh, they want to know how the applications are built on it. So there are so many, so many blockchains that are coming up and, you know, every blockchain have their own complexities. So th that that is something also, you know, to be taken care of. And mostly, if I say in Web3 space, people generally talk about uh, blockchain and smart contract security to gain expertise in this. But it is too much more than that. The market is also like, you know, volatile with of all, all the cryptocurrency tokens coming in and security becomes all the way more important at that point of time. So uh, to, to like sum up it, it really, you know, this adds like a extra layer of complexity to the whole uh, process as compared to the, you know, traditional Web2 spaces that, you know, we have like flat based bug bounty programs in Web2 spaces. Mm -hmm. So, and that is where I see well, some I... similarities and differences. And like, you know, due to that complex, at least I have not seen, you know, a real comprehensive guide. I mean, I've seen mm -hmm. studies about specific types of attack that are specific to blockchain, for example, re right. attacks. Um, but there's not necessarily like as much of a comprehensive guide such as, yeah. you know, the OWASP top 10 proactive mm -hmm. control on the defensive side um, it's not yeah. necessarily or like you know checklist like um, the ASVS application security verification standards or right. um, th these are all, all, all things you know um, if you're not familiar uh, you know, um, viewers can 
look this up, but absolutely, um, it says something about where the state of blockchain still is it's been going <laughs> on for for years. But yes, as far as the research, it's still very new. Mm -hmm. It is, and you know, research is new. Even there are like projects also uh, that you know. I remember when I was uh, getting into the secure Web3 space, you know, talking about security of Web3 only. Uh, I, I saw, I came across uh, certain projects like decentralized application security project. Uh, uh, maybe we can call it DASP, <laughs> top 10. Uh, so it was uh, back in 2018 that they came up with, you know, certain kind of pointers, like, you know, which we can take care of uh, certain kind of issues that, well, Web3 can resonate with, you know, as compared to OWASP. It's not very publicly, um, you know, uh, acceptable or available because it is just like a project and it is on, you know, on GitHub where people can just go review it. It's between a very close-knit security community. And it, it, it talks about issues of, uh, uh, I can't remember all, maybe, you know, denial of services, uh, time manipulation, access control, such kind of issues they talk about. So I I think they are trying to uh, make some guidelines and make some controls around it, but it's not yet very public and publicly acceptable or available. Uh, it's a close knit, uh, you know, topic which is still under uh, what do we say? Still under preparation or still under review or it's being worked up on. Uh, the scope is very large and, you know, uh, such kind of projects which are like open source and collaborative, they require efforts from everybody because uh, in discovering smart contract vulnerabilities, uh, it, it's a huge task. Right. Well said. So, um, yeah, congratulations for taking on that challenge. That's absolutely incredible. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So, and, you know, companies and, and researchers must be super grateful for this opportunity that, that you're providing for yeah. them. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, not, uh, not talking about like, you know, rewards and recognition. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, pen testing, smart contract only, you know, the community, the cybersecurity community have to be very strong. Because I, I would say like uh, the way we do pen test of normal web application, it's very different uh, from how we do it. And uh, protecting application on certain uh, blockchain, uh, it's it's like uh, another ball game altogether. So how, how uh, you know, as the bug bounty creators, mm -hmm. um, so how, uh, what, what is the scoping like? Is it mm -hmm. just not clear or is it just different? Is, is there a standard on how, on how to scope it? So, uh, you know, uh, if I have to say how I have seen sometimes, you know, uh, the scope of Web3, it usually involves like identifying and, you know, um, like they give you a smart contract uh, uh, link. And in that uh, smart contract link, there would be like different branches that you know will be there and it has to be pen tested in an environment. You have to set up your own lab uh, of Web3. There are a lot of uh, open source uh, tools also available for, for such kind of challenges. You know, mostly we see smart contracts uh, as a scope given by the uh, companies, which I have personally seen. So researchers may examine the mechanism, the nodes, the functionalities, and they can come up uh, with the vulnerabilities on them. And uh, there are like decentralized applications also. And uh, in those decentralized applications, the usually uh, if I have, I will not go into much technical details, but you know, there can be vulnerabilities related to any transactions or user data or integrity or the interaction of the start smart contract audit if it has been compromised or not. So I have seen these kind of scopings till now because these are these are the most commonly uh, seen scopes in Web3. Very nice, very interesting. Wow. So 
I guess in closing, if there's one piece of advice that you can mm-hmm. give regarding security to a Web3 entrepreneur, what, it, what would it be? So uh, I would say like, you know, when when I started my entrepreneurial journey, sometimes, you know, uh, it's very lonely at first because, you know, everything you have to deal with on your own. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not something then that, you know, that will come to you. You have to go to the problem, understand it, fix it, solve it, and then, you know, get onto a solution. So I would say um, even getting into Web3, you have, to need me, you have to make sure that what is the challenge that you want to solve? That is number one thing. Because uh, starting up something doesn't mean, you know, you just have to go with the flow and pick up something and become an entrepreneur. You should be solving something. There should be a problem that you should be targeting and then solving that problem. So that's what, you know, an entrepreneur is. Even if you are in Web3 space, what challenges are there in Web3 space? If you pick up one challenge, one problem, and work towards that problem, and you're trying to simplify it for everybody, I think that would be the game changer. Because a lot of companies are in this space. We are not inventing something new. We just have to redefine what is already there. I think that would be the last piece of advice that I can give. That's really well said. Extremely well said. And I think that'll help many listeners. And, <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, because uh, it, it's not about, you know, Web3 or Web2. Uh, if I talk about general entrepreneurship also, and if you're trying to get into it, you need to solve a problem one thing at a time. Well said, well said. Yeah, going from the pain points and solving them. Yeah. For- <laughs> yeah. yeah, very well said. You are such an inspiration. And um, thank you. Wonderful to have you. And um, yeah, great. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe, for having me. Of course.